the way the story is told is like, oh, Disney wanted to compete with Batman, the animated series, right? But you conceived of the show before Batman premiered. What were your original inspirations for Gargoyles? So we did conceive the show before Batman premiered, although to be fair, um, the original inspiration from for Gargoyles was a TV show called Disney's Adventures of the Gummy Bears. Uh, and the original version that we pitched first to Eisner was a comedy adventure show very much in the tone of Gummy Bears. Mm. Gummy Bears was a show created by a guy named Jim Magon that I just loved. I worked a little bit on the last couple seasons of it mm. as an executive, just sort of supervising it, but mm. um, I, I had no creative input in it. Um, but I loved it. Yeah. And we felt like it was a great original show that Disney had made that got no respect. Mm -hmm. And we knew why. Um, there was a lot of brand confusion between gummy bears and care bears. Yes. And gummy bears had this great backstory and this great medieval setting and all this fun stuff going on. And care bears, um, I'm going to offend some care bear fans listening to this podcast, but, um, uh, Care Bears was to me a sort of saccharine sweet show where it's like, I'll give you a hug and everything will be better, you know? And, um, and, but both of them featured small multicolored bears. Mm -hmm. Um, and ours, even though theirs was the saccharine show, in my opinion, ours was the show that was named after a candy. Right. Um, so I understood why there was confusion. But Gargoyles was an attempt to do a show like Gummy Bears, not copy it, but do one in that genre mm -hmm. um, that would garner more respect. So it was the 90s, and um, in the 90s, everything needed to be edgier. Right. Being edgy, that was a big thing. So we did two things very consciously to make the show edgier. Instead of doing cute little multicolored bears, we did cute little multicolored monsters, gargoyles. Mm. I'd been fascinated with gargoyles since I was a teenager. Mm. Um, so this was a natural thing for me. It's like we can have fun little monsters running around doing these adventures instead of fun little teddy bears doing them. Mm. And then the second thing we did is we wanted to have this great medieval backstory but we'd cast a spell on them and put them to sleep for a thousand years and have them wake up in modern day Manhattan. That mm -hmm. would be edgier too. It yeah. would be modern day. It wouldn't be this soft focus medieval thing. No, it's happening right now. You have these creatures from the medieval world who are waking up in modern day Manhattan. Now that's fundamentally the premise of gargoyles, but the tone was very different. Mm -hmm. um, and we tried to sell that show to Eisner and he just didn't buy it. Mm. Now, I think it would have been a great show, not the show that we all know and love, mm -hmm. but it probably would have came and went. Right. So my boss still thought it was a, my immediate boss. I mean, Eisner was the big boss, right? Mm. But my immediate boss still thought uh, there's something to this. Uh, so work on it some more. So uh, I pitched the show to Tad Stones, who created um, Darkwing Dark Duck Dark. shows. And um, Tad had, by that time, seen uh, early footage for Beauty and the Beast. This is before mm. Beauty and the Beast came out. But he had seen it already. And he said, why don't you, instead of having all these little gargoyles, you've got this human female character who helps them out. Mm -hmm. what if you had one big gargoyle instead of all the little ones and this human, and you could do a beauty and the beast kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so an artist named Greg Buhler and I created Goliath who did not exist in the old show, mm -hmm. the old version of the show. And um, we took the whole comedy version of the show and put it through the prism of Goliath and came out the other end fundamentally with the show that aired. Mm. And then we had to pitch it. And so we came up with all these ideas. I mean, and again, this was way more up my alley. I was a superhero guy. I had worked at DC comics for years. Um, 
And so this was going to be a superhero show without all the, you know, without capes and tights, and tights. right? But mm -hmm. that was the genre we were now in, the, the sort of mutt superhero genre, which incorporates detective fiction and science fiction and magic and fantasy and horror and occult and anything you can think of is all part of the superhero genre, right? Right. So um, that's what we were going to do. And we went nuts coming up with ideas for this show. We came up with this incredibly huge pitch for this show, which we pitched to Eisner and he said no. Mm. And we walked away again, still feeling like this was a good show. Um, and we had a meeting with Jeffrey Katzenberg, uh, who at the time was uh, chairman of the Walt Disney Studio. So Eisner was Katzenberg's boss. And then we were all under Katzenberg. Um, and Jeffrey said uh, in this sort of post-mortem meeting, so you're going to keep working on Gargoyles. And I actually was like, no, I don't think so. Because I pitched it to Michael twice now, once as a comedy adventure show and one is an action drama he mm -hmm. said no to both i don't know where else to take it he's like no he didn't say no he just wanted you to work on it some more mm -hmm. well i had been there the day before and that was not the message that came from michael but <laughs> what i was getting was that jeffrey still thought there was something to it mm -hmm. and he wasn't going to disagree with michael in a room at least not back then but um but he still wanted us to pursue it so we went back to the drawing board for a third time and we took a careful look at the show and we said, no, there's nothing wrong with this show. This is a great effing show, right? Mm. The problem was the pitch. The pitch was so huge with all these ideas, the pack and the mutates and all this stuff, which we ultimately did put in the show. Right. But the pitch was distracting. You couldn't focus on anything. So we cut the pitch. We didn't add anything. We right. just cut stuff out and we focused the pitch on the relationship between Goliath, the lead gargoyle, mm -hmm. and Elisa, the human cop who uh, became his friend. Mm -hmm. um, and by that time, Beauty and the Beast had come out. Right. And as you may know, was something of a hit for the Walt Disney Company. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So when we went back a third time to Eisner, we really had a focused Beauty and the Beast modern day style pitch with a gargoyle and a human. And yeah, we had a little bit on some of the other characters in there, the trio and Hudson and Bronx and Xanatos, although back then he was called Xavier and Demona. Um, but we really focused it on Goliath and Elisa and Michael bought it like that. Then mm. we were making the show. 